Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for hitting that play button for another episode of the Hetty Coleman Podcast, where we sit down with fabulous people to have a go, to help go win conversations. Go win is, if you've been listening for a while, you should know what go win means by now, but I'm going to tell you anyway. And then for all of you new people, I want you to know what go win means. Go win is being consistent and doing the right things that allow for you to achieve the wins that you have defined for your life so that you can live out your greatest story. And ladies and gentlemen, the reason I have fabulous people like my friend Jordan here on is because we want to help you discover right things because you may have a win uh, that you've defined for yourself that lines up with what I believe Jordan can offer us today, which is around photography, specifically around headshots. But first, we're going to learn Jordan's story. Uh, Ms. Jordan Clark, how are you doing today? I'm good, Hattie. Thank you so much for having me. I Thanks really for appreciate being here it. today. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, and let me just say that before we're jumping on this podcast, you just did a quick headshot photo. Yes. What did we call it? Photo <laughs> shoot? Yeah, quick little headshot. A little, little quick. Little, yeah. Yeah, so I'm excited about seeing how those turn out. Yeah, me too. I personally need those because I get invited to come speak, and people are always asking me for headshots. And yes. I saw some of yours, and not just recently on LinkedIn, but I've seen your work over the years. How long have we known you? Like, I think I met you through Creative Mornings. That's exactly the right. The first year that Oklahoma City had it, thanks yes. to Hannah over uh-huh. at the Treasury. Um, so I think that had to have been like 2018 or 2019, yep. 2018, somewhere in there. somewhere there. Yeah. And then from there, uh, just through Hannah's events, I think I've seen mm-hmm. you taking photos there, mm-hmm. following each other on social media. Recently yes. saw you did some great work for somebody. Periodically, like, people will have you come in, and then they will offer headshots to people. Like, mm-hmm. I think Hannah's done that before for her. Yeah, I think, yes, I have gone into the Treasury one time for headshots. I can't specifically remember what it was for. But, yeah, sometimes, like, if somebody's having an event, I think it's a great opportunity to what, like, what other value can you bring to that event? And I think photos is something, you know, whether it's photos of your event or photos for the people at your event. I'm all about like trying to do as many things with one thing <laughs> yeah. as with possible. With one event, let's knock it yeah. all out. Yes. Yeah, like if you're going to have an event, bring in a photographer, especially if it's something you've put a lot of work into, or bring something, bring in a photographer for your people at your event. Yeah. So. For, and when you do that, it helps it be a more engaging event, mm-hmm. I think, right? Yeah, I think so too. And um, I remember with Creative Morning specifically, they had me do headshots a couple times for the people that just walked in. And what I love about that is it's a great way to meet people yep. and engage with people. And people are are also excited because it's just bonus. It's yes. bonus thing. It's a bonus thing for coming to that event, uh-huh. you know, yes. and they don't typically have to pay for it. And it's a headshot. Mm-hmm. And most people can use a good headshot, yes. you know. Thinking about social media profile pics, all mm-hmm. of those different things. So yes. all that. When you said that, I immediately grabbed my phone because I think I have a. You did that specific thing at a Creative Mornings, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Down on Film Row. Mm-hmm. I think, and we yes. had a Creative Morning. You came in and you did, and I still use that one to today. Really? Yes, I okay. still use that one. Good to know because it I, is, I get insecure about those things sometimes because it's not like. People get to pick. First of all, it's early in the morning. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but I always have like tired eyes in the morning. Uh huh. Um, and then you don't get to really pick. It's kind of just to come. Okay, that's crazy. That feels like so long ago. Do you remember wow. this? Yes. Yeah. I do remember. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. So I still use that. Yeah. That's so awesome. To I love this that. Day, what would you have done differently? Because right now no, I thank see. Thank you the, for asking. I see the thing in the background. Yeah. The uh what is that? Yeah, there's like an electrical panel back electrical. there or something. <laughs> yeah. So because it was such a, I mean, first of all, it was uh, volunteer centered. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. So there's only so much time I can probably put into that as far as like editing goes. Yeah. So I didn't remove that. Um, but I also would have gotten up higher like I did with you today. Yes. And I would have had you turn a little bit more to that window light. Gotcha. Instead of looking directly at me. Gotcha. Because there was a lot of shadow fill on one side and a lot uh-huh. of light on one side. And I would have had you turn a little bit to the side so you're more facing the window so you see more light on the yeah because you there's like some light here but there's some shadow here and that's not always a bad thing honestly no, uh-huh. I like the I like the dimensions sometimes but I probably would have had you turn a little bit more to the window light or I would have set it up totally different and just had you I would have been in front of the window and you facing the window 
Got you. Yeah. Got you. What I will do for those of you who are listening or watching on YouTube, you can't see what we're talking about right now, Mm -hmm. but I will add a link in the description so you can see the photo that we're talking about (laughs) and you can click on it and and kind of see what what we're talking about. So, And I think that's a great photo of you. I think it's a great photo. Yeah, it's a great photo of you and... I love it, but I will say when we'll get into like how often you should update your headshot, Yes. but I've been working with some of my clients for my entire career now and they'll come back to me. And I always love when they come back to me because I always, I'm always looking to get it more perfect every time. Yeah. So I think like, as we learn things over the year, had like, you may not see it as a client or you might because you're somebody that's interested in photography, but I always think, okay, that's a big improvement from three years ago. Uh huh. Uh huh. Because I feel like my skill is honed in too. But gotcha. So, so it's not so much about the person, but the no, photographer. It's not about the person. Three years in, he's yeah. now become a better photographer. Or, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. But, and then just it's just amazing too. Like even though that pit, like that's five years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I can I still use that one today. Feel good about it. Yeah. I, I'll show you one that we recently did for uh, for work. Um. See, that's my smile. See, that's the same smile I'm okay, giving you yeah. today. Yeah, it's a great uh-huh. smile. I that's just t- a great photo too because it feels very you. Like I like the beanie, I like the glasses, uh-huh. the hoodie. Yes, like that's that's a good that's a good shot. Yeah, I'll show like this. It. I'll show this photo too in the description, uh, so you can see this is the second one. So I've got a red beanie mm-hmm. in this picture that she's talking about. But that's just me with a clicker, doing it yourself. Yeah, and, and yeah, from my from my phone, uh, and then we have. That's a great shot, too. Yeah. The thing about that shot, too, is I like how you're just in a black T-shirt on this gray background. It's got some cool light to it. Yeah. And, like, because it is so much fill space on either side, uh-huh. you can, you know, add you text play to with that it. or yeah. play with it. Yeah. Yeah. And design and stuff. Yeah. Now, I feel like, so when I when I go in, though, mm-hmm. is, it gets blurred. Should that be the case? Should it? Well, it maybe depends on what file size you have. Like, gotcha. if it's not... If this is not highest. the original. Yeah, if it's yeah. not the original, maybe you've pulled it from somewhere, then pulled uh-huh. it from somewhere, yes, and it just... Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you can go back and find the original, I bet it's not going to be blurry. Hopefully yeah. not. Yeah, I mean, but I don't know how many people are going to be doing this. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but but yeah. if you did want to crop it in, you want it to be clear and... Yes, yeah, yeah. So whenever you send... So let's, let's talk about that. When you send me the photos from mm-hmm. when you did the photos... Cause, Today. Yes, you send it at the highest... Do you, Cause see, look, yours is not, so. This must be like, this must be like the the highest. Fi- <laughs> <laughs> that is that a very is not high resolution. <laughs> <laughs> that does not blur out at all. Like that is really <laughs> good. That is that. <laughs> yeah. That okay. Good yeah, job. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Gosh, that that makes me nervous about today. Um, but yes, I always send the highest res- resolution. Resolution. Sorry, I cannot say that word. Mm-hmm. Personally, I do. Um, and we'll get into talking about like licensing and stuff because a lot of times people want you to want to send you like the web version or like the web uh, resolution or something because it just when you upload photos to like Facebook or Instagram, yeah, they come across a little bit. The resolution is not as consistent. So if I send you a web resolution, because I know you're going to be using it on like website, yeah, social media, sometimes uh-huh. it's better for you yeah. to have that um, size. And if you get full resolution, sometimes it's just not needed. Gotcha. I don't know how to explain that otherwise. Like if you're going to put it in magazine or something um, or in print, it is needed. But you don't need it as much. Yeah, you don't need it as much. So sometimes people won't just give you that because sometimes they'll ask you to pay extra for it or something. Oh. Yeah. But I mean, I, I do because why not? I don't know. I just don't see a reason like not to give you the best why you know, not? Yeah, give it to me pro- all. Yeah. Give, it to me. give me yeah. everything to me. Now, lighting. Uh-huh. Let, before we get into all that other stuff, tell the people a little bit about yourself. Okay. Uh, uh, where you from? Yeah. Tell us who, how your friends would describe you. Okay. Just give us a little bit. Okay. So um, I'm from Yukon, um, so not far from here in Guthrie, America. Um, so I've grown up in Oklahoma my entire life. I come from a family of all girls. I have a twin sister. Get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. So my identical twin is she's like my best friend. Um, All my sisters have kids. So I'm the only one without kids. But soon enough. I just got married in September to my wife, Caitlin. So we want to have kids in a couple years. Yeah. Um, But right now I'm an aunt to 
let me think, <laughs> six, seven, I can't count right now, Okay. Um, kids, and half of them were adopted, and that's a big thing in my family. Like, my mom grew up in foster care. Um, my sister is currently adopting a little girl out of foster care, and my older sister adopted two little kids out of DHS when they were born. Um, so I love that about my family. It's something that I want to do, too, in the future. Um, let's see. What else? Work-wise, I've been doing photography since 2015. And before that, I mean, I mean, I guess I started full time when I was like 24, 25, okay. and I'm going to be 32 in a couple weeks. Um, so it feels long, but also short. But I started out working under a photographer in Edmond, actually. Okay. Um, and before that, I wasn't into. I mean, I was into photography, but not professionally. I was kind of working my way up to that, working with like families that I knew for like Christmas photos and stuff like that. And I've always like loved photography. Mm. It's runs in my family. My, my grandpa met my grandma through photography. Oh, okay. So this is actually crazy. And I didn't know a lot of this, um, until recently, like the past couple of years, but my grandpa owned a photography studio or worked in a photography studio in Ada, Oklahoma. My grandma walked in one day and that's how they met. Dad, if I'm getting the story wrong, correct me. <laughs> but I'm pretty <laughs> sure this is right. Um, so that's how they met. They didn't stay together. They both got remarried. But my my grandpa used to take his big camera up in airplanes and take, like, what would now be considered drone photos. But okay. they were way less cool back then. Um, so that's what my grandpa did. And then my dad was really into it. So growing up, my dad always had like his camera recorder attached to his, you know, his big one attached to his like shoulder. Yeah. And we have all these amazing home videos from growing up. And they're like, I wouldn't have these memories without them probably. Yeah. Cause they're like when I was super young all the way up to probably high school. Okay. Um, my sister's calling me right now. Um, so it was all like documenting was always a part of my journey, I guess. And Got you. my dad was a big hobbyist and is a big hobbyist. So he got me into photography uh, whenever I was younger and g passed on several cameras to me from my grandpa and got was always getting me like the latest and greatest like Canon PowerShot Pro or something like that, okay. you know, in high school. Lucky and then, you. Yeah, honestly, very lucky. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he tried to get me into guitar and all this other stuff, but he bought me my first DSLR in high school. And that's whenever I started really trying to take photos semi-professionally, you know, for friends and family. Um, and then he got my sister, Alex, my older sister, a camera also. And she actually has a photography studio in Edmond. So she's a photographer, too. Really? Full time? Yes. Um, yeah, full time. So she has a studio and she does mostly like newborns, you know, babies and baskets and that kind of thing. Um, and then, yeah, I slowly got into it. So she took her career professional first and then I kind of followed in that. Um and then, yeah, I started kind of an understudy, an intern, if you will, for another um, photographer in Edmond. And then I moved to a photographer in Oklahoma City. That was 2016. And then I finally took it full time in 2017. Gotcha. So that's a little bit of my that's history, I guess. But I've yeah. tried a lot of different types of photography, um, weddings, families, portraits. That's what I mostly got started in. And then over the years, I've sort of want to niche down, I guess, if you will, and more of the business and commercial industry but my favorite thing to do is families okay probably why why families yeah yeah good question because i feel like that would be harder uh -huh. <laughs> dealing with kids yes get them to smile yes so All the crazy stuff, and i would imagine moms probably wanted it to be perfect and yeah is that is that not true or true so it is true, but that's kind of the give and take. And I'm still learning personally how to like best communicate this. Yeah. But my favorite photos and the favorite pictures of all the moms that I've ever worked with are the ones that are not staring at the camera and smiling. Okay. And that's what I really try to like get across. I, I do want to get that shot if possible. That one shot where everybody's looking at the camera, that would be great. Yeah. But honestly, everybody's favorite photos are the ones where somebody's looking off you know, maybe somebody's la looking at me with an authentic smile, but the other ones are interacting with each other or, um, I don't know, pushing their, like, favorite toddler, like, uh -huh. car thing in yeah. the front yeah. yard yeah. or, yeah. Uh -huh. and the parents are hanging out, just hanging out with them or, um, those are always, like, my favorite pictures and I think that they're probably the favorite photos of the moms, too. But, um, yeah, usually it's, like, you know, the two-year-old is not cooperating at all, and we just run around the park and 
chase them and get those like fun shots. Yeah. Um, and then the two year old will get in the car and I'll get a photo from the mom that she took on her iPhone of the two year old smiling at her. <laughs> and it always happens when they leave the yeah. shoot. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. You can never predict how like the two year old's gonna behave, you know, but it's I think that's like part of the fun of it. Yeah. And if they're totally having a meltdown, I always offer to like, hey, let's reschedule. It's uh-huh. okay. Uh-huh. And I want to be flexible because they're paying money yeah. to get these photos and I don't want them to just have zero photos of the kid not cooperating, you know? Yeah. And that's great customer service on your part. Yeah. 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 Like for me, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I love the way that she worked with me. I'm going to send my friends yeah. to you. You Thanks. know, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, no, and I think that's really cool. Yeah. And and I try to avoid that situation because I'm always asking, you know, like, what time is I, my first question if there's little kids, what time is nap time? Okay. You know, let's work around nap time. Are they better in the morning or the evening? You know, so I try to set myself up for success. But sometimes you just don't know because yeah. we're all human and we all have our bad days. We so, have, yeah. Yes. No, that's, I think that's really good that that you're willing to do that. And um, it really speaks to you as a person in the sense of, like, it's about money, but it's not about money. Right. And so you can feel that when people are willing, like, let's just reschedule. Yes. Where it makes me feel like, okay, this isn't just about money for it, even though. You know, it yes. is to a degree because it's a business. You have right. to do that. Exactly. And how do you exactly. make people feel like it's not, but it is? And yes, so, yeah. exactly. And thankfully, yeah. that's only happened a couple of times. But if it does happen, just it's okay. Yes. You yeah. know, it's okay. Yeah. And and I just try to work with them as best as possible. Yeah. So. No, that's, that's really good. Um, so I hear kind of how you got into photography mm-hmm. and all that. When did you decide, like, I'm going to make this my full-time gig? Like, what was that experience like? What were some of your thought processes? If somebody's listening, like, what are some things that you took into consideration in order to take this step? Yes. That is a great question. And I still get – I just sat down with coffee for a friend. Uh, She's more of an acquaintance acquaintance the other day, and she was asking me the same thing because she's thinking about shifting her career to doing – she's a landscape photographer, and she wants to make it into a career. Um, So – do you want me to tell you how I did it or do you want me to tell you how I wish I would have done it? <laughs> Cause two very different things now. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> like I know the proper way to do it. Okay. And you do have to take a little bit I of a leap. I want to know your story. Okay. Yeah. You do have to take a little bit of a leap, but I don't want somebody to do it if they're not the financial stress of it can be a lot sometimes if you're not prepared. So what I did though, which I encourage everybody to do this. And this is why I've always been an open book about sharing um, and having people like come alongside me to shoots and things like that is because the way I did it was I started out just taking those, you know, Christmas card pictures for my friends Mm -hmm. and my family. And I would charge, you know, maybe 50 bucks or maybe nothing, but I would try to get into the habit of charging for it and learning that side of it. And I think I started off just using PayPal or something. So there are a lot of things I learned along the way, but I just started out, you know, maybe they paid me by check, cash, whatever, 50 bucks. Let's go take your Christmas card photo. And I started out at like a tree farm or something. And I just had everybody come to me. Um, so just getting your friends out. Um, the One of the first things I did when I was trying to learn how to use a DSLR camera professionally was I asked three of my really good friends that are also very beautiful, in my opinion, to come out at sunrise with me. And they did. They Uh did. And I took another photographer with me. Shout out Ben Winters in Oklahoma City. I took him with me, and he was so kind to, like, I would be like, hey, Ben, here's my settings right now. What do you think? And he would be like, set your aperture to this. Set your ISO to this. And this could be a whole nother podcast. Yeah. But basically, I would just ask him questions and learn, like, on the spot. Um, I took a couple of classes, you know, manual intro to like manual photography, how, how to like use your DSLR manually instead of, you know, just setting it to automatic and letting it do whatever it wants. Now, was that a college class or just a cl- no, workshop? No, it was online? a workshop. Okay. It was a workshop that somebody in, um, Oklahoma city was hosting. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So I just try to look for opportunities like that. Um, and so I took my friends out, we took those photos. So that was kind of some experience, like on the job experience is the best way to learn. So if you can come alongside another photographer, carry their equipment, I don't know, bring your camera, ask them if you can just take some photos alongside them. I'm happy to do that, especially on several of my shoots where my clients have been clients for a long time and they're not going to, you know, care as much. It's not going to be awkward. Um, I'll just tell them, Hey, this is my friend, Hetty. He's going to come hang out with me and take some photos alongside me. They don't care. They, you know, they, they like it more photos, the better. Um, but 
that's something I would encourage people to do. And that's something I did. And then thankfully, my sister who had taken her career already, Alex, who's in Edmond here at a, she has a studio. She sent me a job posting that this guy, Brandon Burton, um, who used to be a photographer in Edmond. I think he's still doing it, but I'm not sure. He posted, you know, I'm looking for an associate photographer, which means that you take photos under his brand. You're essentially a photographer that he's hired for his brand. You know, you're not taking them for yourself. He's paying you an hourly fee or like a session fee. You don't have to edit the pictures. You just come take them for him. And he has editors. He has all these things in place. Um, So that's like the first job that I had doing it. Real quick, though. So oftentimes I think about a photographer, I think about it's their shot, like... If I go hire Jordan, Mm -hmm. I'm hiring Jordan for her look. Okay, so that's one thing you kind of – I gave up in the beginning because I just wanted the hands-on experience. Got you. I didn't, like, care so much about my look at the time because I was still learning what that was. Yeah. You know? So this gave me an opportunity. It's like – it's a modern-day let's – Go to Moto Photo. Let's go to Sears. You know. <laughs> okay, I guess. This, okay. This guy's yeah. super talented, but he's like a modern day like that. It's a modern spin. It's a different. It's a modern studio spin on the, that type of experience. I'm with you now. Yeah. yeah. So I basically just came in as a photographer for him. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so for him, it was just strictly a business. Mm-hmm. He was a photographer, but he just was he was in it for the business, not yes. so much like, hey, I'm the photographer that you want. Yeah, I mean, he was, he was, people knew it because of him, Yeah. but then he slowly realized like, hey, I can make more money if I bring in another photographer and do double the work yeah. and pay them hourly and pay yeah. them per session. Yeah. So that's kind of what his um, yeah. business model was at first. Gotcha. So I gotcha. just so happened to find that opportunity and I ended up getting the job. And that was a big deal for me because it was hands-on learning If you can't find that opportunity, and honestly, it's probably hard to find, especially with no experience, like no real life experience, there's always classes, workshops, the internet. There are so many things you can do, but I think there's nothing better than getting out with your camera and just try like trial and error. Yeah. Because I used to sit on the couch with my camera and like just look at the dials and like take a photo of my dog or something while I'm sitting there. But like you're not you're in a dark living room like it's going to be different if you just get outside or get you know, somewhere where you can get a little more subjects to shoot besides your dog. Yeah. I don't know. No, I think that's cool. That's yeah. cool. Um, what, what has been your favorite photo that you've ever taken? Do you have a favorite photo? Okay. So I think you sent me this question in yeah. preparation and I literally like thought about this today and I can't think of a favorite photo specifically, but can I just tell you, I guess what I would I have a favorite photo from every shoot that I take uh-huh. and it's always a shot where like, first of all, I will say this about like lighting, the lightning in a bottle to me is when like, I love sunlight when like the sun is like magic. It just feels yeah. like magic. Uh-huh. I don't know. And then even if it's a cloudy day, I don't know. There's just something about like the place we're at or whatever we're doing. Um, so like if the setting is right, and everybody just feels comfortable and like relaxed and like you're not trying to just get a good smile shot like we talked about earlier. There's just this moment in every shoot where I'm like, that's going to be my favorite shot. I just know it. <laughs> and like, that's why I like normal, you know, people do mini shoots yeah. and I, I do mini shoots because it's a great way to get those Christmas card pictures or whatever you people want here in Oklahoma. Um, but my favorite shoots are the ones where we can spend a little more time together and just get to that place where it feels like really comfortable and you feel really relaxed. And there's just that connection between like you and your family mm. or you and your person, your partner or whatever. Um, those are always going to be like my favorite photos from each set. But my personal favorite photos are the ones with like my loved ones in it Yeah, that I just feel like I can just see their personality yeah. in it, yeah. whether I took it or I'm in it with them or something. Yeah. But it's just like those things that you just can't get anywhere else besides yeah. like that picture. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Um, if you didn't do photography, what would you be doing? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> so before we got recording, I was kind of telling you that because of the um, inconsistency of photography sometimes, it can get stressful at times, especially like in the winter months. And I'm constantly learning of ways to like combat that. 
but anything with a consistent paycheck, my some of my favorite things to do are like personal assistant to somebody. I lo- I'm very okay. type A. Okay. Although I am a photographer, I actually don't think of myself as much as a creative as I do like type A, uh-huh. business minded. I like try to be that way. Systems? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So if I can come alongside somebody and just help them do the things that are hard for them in their business, yeah. I enjoy that. Um, whether it's like with a startup or something where somebody's really trying to make like a passion and a dream come to life. Gotcha. And I can just help them in any way that I like have talents and gifts to do so. That's what I would probably want to do. Gotcha. Yeah. So like uh, an executive assistant. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, uh, at one time my, my boss was w- wanting to hire an executive assistant for himself. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, you know what? I think I could be an executive. Like it's just mm-hmm. something about doing like, I like, so what's your, do you have a favorite to do app? What's your favorite app as far as like time management or anything like that? Are you into those kind of things? Oh Yeah. Um, so, well, my favorite app of all time is probably Google calendar. (laughs) (laughs) I live and die by the Google calendar. Like I send my friends, if my friend texts me and they're like, Hey, can we get coffee next week? Uh I'm like, yeah, here's when I'm free. It it feels very businessy, but it's kind of like what I have to do with my job because now, my job's all over the place. And I are you an, send them the, the link that oh, lets them the no, lets them book you? No, 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 I'm not doing that. But I know you do. <laughs> no, no, I'm just sending them an invite. Oh, okay, okay. On the calendar, okay. Yeah, okay. no, I I give them options. I don't send them like here's a link, book my time. Yeah. No, I don't do that because these are like my best friends. But even I my, deal with my best friends. I'm like, we're going to save time here. Just pick a time. Okay. Yeah. See, that's fine. That's fine. But like I do it with my wife, Caitlin. So yeah. she would probably be really annoyed by that. Oh, okay. Because we don't share a calendar. But if we're, we have therapy or if we have like a movie date or uh-huh. something, I constantly send her calendar and yeah. constantly. Because you so. don't share calendars. We don't share a calendar. We should get on some kind of system where we do. I would think so. Yeah, but we just like we just talk every week about what we're doing that week. Yeah, and like what shoots I have, and I'll usually just send her like a screenshot of my uh-huh. like week on Google yeah. Calendar. But um, yeah, that would probably be a better solution. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so that's my favorite app. But as far as like time tracking, I use Toggle, T O G G O. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes for what you for working and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but otherwise, as far as organization apps, no, that's really all I use. I mean, I've dabbled in like Asana and okay. some other apps like that, but. So you don't use a to-do app? How do you do your task? Um, I'm a pen and paper oh, person. Okay. Yeah. I have like See, this. That's, you're my, you're, yeah, yeah. You're, you're my role model. Yeah. Cause. Because I try to keep work. Caitlin, my wife, she'll probably be like, what are you talking about? But I try to keep work, work. Like when I'm in my office. In your head, this is what you try to do. No, no. When I'm in my office, I like have my like little desk um, pad thing. Uh And I basically just have like my, it breaks it down like Monday through Friday. And then it has like to-do list on the side. And I just tear that off every week and start a new one. Gotcha. So that's what I like to do. Um, But yeah, otherwise... That's where my to-dos live. And I try to keep it at the office. And I try to keep my things at the office so I don't bring it home. But yeah, I need to like last night, as you know, I was emailing you at 1030 at, on my laptop in my bed. So, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't always happen. I have a little office inside of my bedroom. Mm-hmm, that's, mm-hmm. That's, I think that's where I was when I was communicating back and forth with you. But in my house, everybody's taking every space available. So oh. I have to do that. And I don't want to come back and forth here. Mm-hmm. Every time I want to do, because I'm always doing working or something. Yeah, so, like always on the go. Yeah, always yeah, on the that's go. That's how I feel so, too. Uh, but yes, no, I feel you. Yeah, I, feel you. I don't want to do it either, but it, it often <laughs> happens. So now, one of the things that talking about email, mm-hmm. I asked you about five right things regarding uh, a headshot, mm-hmm. like things to consider, and you gave me five things. Yes. I want to go down this list for you, and then we go deeper into each one. Okay. okay. Um, so the first thing that you gave me was, what is your headshot for? It's a great question to ask mm-hmm. yourself, right? Don't think you consider. How will your headshot be used? Okay. And then you number three is if it's for a company or you trying to match another person's headshot. Yeah. Yeah. We can get into that a little yeah, more. I think that's that. probably okay, confusing. Yes. And then number four, are you wanting a simple headshot or something more um, elaborate. elaborate? Yeah. And then number five is your photographer yeah so we're gonna go down this list 
Talk to me about what is your headshot for? What do you mean by that? What should we be thinking about? Okay, so when you're thinking about getting your headshot, I think you need to consider what field are you in currently? Um, Because most of us are going to have a job for at least a year, hopefully. Um, So if you're going to be updating your headshot, you know, every year, say, I think currently what field are you in? So like today, for example, we did a couple outside of your podcast studio, but then we did a couple in your podcast studio because I, my, some of my favorite headshots are like environmental headshots. Mm -hmm. So one time I did headshots, quote unquote, I'll kind of explain what I mean by this later, later, but like of an artist and we did her like painting. We did her like sitting in her studio. Um, so yeah, are you a corporate person? Are you, is it for your business? If it is for your business, obviously we're going to have a lot more leeway there yep. but if it's corporate then there's going to be some guidelines maybe your company wants you to follow so yep. yeah what field are you in that's one question i always ask gotcha so yeah yep because then that kind of determines how yeah. we can approach the shots yes yeah for example like you mentioned being outside of the studio versus inside of the studio so yes. i guess if i wanted to use them for so i'm using for a couple of different things one i can be using it for to promote my podcast right so i have a headshot for that but then also as a speaker People want a headshot of me, and so we got some outside the studio that we could be able to use. And so, mm-hmm. you were thinking for me. I didn't think that. I didn't think that through. But you, yeah. you came in ready to do either or or both. Yes, and I always ask that question up front because sometimes I might have an idea, or you might have an idea of something you want to do. Like for example, if you're in real estate and you want to bring in your team, you know, of realtors with you, and you want to all get headshots, maybe we go into like a cool house that you're currently promoting and trying to sell. Mm. We can shoot inside that house with permission of the se- like the yeah, person who yeah, actually owns yeah, it yeah. Um, and do the headshots there. And that is a cool opportunity that nobody else in real estate is going to have for that specific house. You know, yeah. um, I shot in this really cool house one time in Nichols Hills. That was like a house I would never have access to otherwise. And we got some great photos of like the team together individuals, um, so it can determine location. It can determine like approach to the shot, all kinds of things. Yeah, no, that's good. All right. So number two, how will you, how will your headshot be used? How will your headshot yes. be used? Yeah. This is another question I usually have for people. Um, I, I do assume sometimes that it's just going to be used for, I probably shouldn't assume this, but I can assume sometimes that it's going to be used for a billboard or something, even though it's maybe not. But I always shoot with that that way just in case because I want it to be the highest resolution. Yep. Um, I want it to be super sharp and clean. Um, but things to think through, like, is it going to be used on a website? Social media is a big one. But for social media, you know, you're looking at a small circle on LinkedIn or something like that. So you don't. So the res doesn't have to be as high, the resolution. The res maybe doesn't have to be as high, but also really it's just like your face. It's like Mm -hmm. neck Mm kind of like face up. And so that's something to think about when I'm taking a shot of a person, I will usually start out wide, get that wide shot, come in horizontally, vertically, come in a little closer, maybe get a different angle of that same shot. So there are like multiple ways that same position or that same pose can be used. Yeah. Um, is it going to be like on a business card, which kind of goes along with like social media, like a presentation? Sometimes people want like negative space in their shot that maybe they don't want to like Photoshop in later. Um, so that way that negative space can you could throw text on it. You can blend it into like a presentation, something yeah. like that. Um, is it going to be used in print? That's another question that I always want to ask, like in a book bio page or is it going to be in a magazine or whatever? Um I always want to know that when taking the shot, just so I know like expectations, basically. Yeah, that's good. Um, you saying that on a business card immediately thought I'm thinking in my head, like I get business cards all the time for people mm-hmm. and I can't remember who the people are. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, maybe I should start putting my, when you said that, I was like, maybe that's a good place for me to put my yeah. uh, headshot is maybe on my card. Yeah. I mean, I think it is, I see it commonly in like realtors. I think I work with a lot of realtors. So that's maybe why I see it. I think email signature is where I see the most headshots if mm-hmm. I'm not on like LinkedIn or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but also so many business cards are digital these days. Yeah. Like I just have a QR code on my home screen yeah. on my phone that yeah. people can scan and there's all my info and it yeah. has a photo of me. But I do like business cards because I kind of use it just like I do like checklist. Yeah. I, if I have it in front of me, 
I'm going to go ahead and email them or do whatever. And yeah. then I put it in a stack that's like, yeah. I've reached out to this yeah, person. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. And the, the other thing about e uh, business cards, and not always the case, but most times it's an address where there's, when I do digital, I don't find people give his address as much. And oh. that's the way that I like to send uh, him oh. notes. Yeah. You know? I but, like that. So I don't see as many addresses when I do digital versus on a card. That's true. Also, I'm like, I don't have my I don't have my business address on my card. Yeah. I just have my website, which has all my information on it. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's true, too. Yeah. But yeah, that yes. would make sense. Yeah. Uh huh. That's but cool. somebody's probably thinking, like you just said, like, well, it's on my website. You know, why would mm -hmm. I have my address on there if I have my website, which mm -hmm. has all of my. But sometimes I just like the card is there. Yes. If it's on the card. I can just go that way. So, yes, that's good. Uh, number three, if it's for a company yeah. or, or are you trying to match another person's headshot? Okay, so I kind of jotted these down quickly, but if your headshot is for a company, uh -huh. these are things I want to know. So I usually ask, what is your headshot for? Yeah. If they say, oh, my company sent me to you. Okay, who do you work for? What company uh -huh. are you work going to start working for? And... If I have worked with people in that company before, I know that they're going for a certain look. Ah. Like going back to realtors, I've worked with this group quite a bit that they want basically every realtor to have a headshot on a white background. Gotcha. So I kind of know that they're coming for that. So I know that they're going to want to match that. Or I even ask them, do you know if your company wants to match other headshots that you've that are on your company's website? Because I always go to the company website and I look at the headshots too yep. before they come in. And sometimes they're like, no, they didn't mention anything like that. They don't need that, um, which is preferred because it's really hard to match a headshot that another photographer has taken, you know, unless it's just a generic, like they're in front of a background or gotcha. they're in front of like trees or something. We can try to mimic that. Yeah. Um, but it is hard to like get consistency if I didn't take the previous shots too. Uh -huh. um, so I don't prefer that. But I always just want to know that question. Huh. Yeah, like if if what are your what is your does I guess does your company have any requirements for yeah. this? Really, is what the question should be. What is the company looking for? That's sending yeah. you. Yeah. Sometimes companies yeah. will send them with yeah. a sheet of these are what the headshot needs to be, which usually it's something I already do. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's the size yeah. of the image or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just want to know to make sure that we're set up on the right foot. But on that note. And this could be a bonus tip later, I guess. But I will say, like, if your company is sending you in for a headshot, let's get that shot. But then sometimes people will say this just out of the gate. Hey, can I pay you personally? Because the company usually paid me for the headshot. But can I pay you personally to take a few more photos of me? Mm. And I think it's a good going back to, like, the event and capitalizing on the event and getting, you know, multiple things done with the event you're putting on. Getting multiple things done with your headshot session I think is a good thing. Mm. Like if we can take different photos during your headshot shoot yeah, that you can purchase later on if you want to, or you can, you know, go ahead and purchase up front if you want that time. These are why I want to, like, these are reasons why I want to communicate with you ahead of time to know like what, what we're working with. What are your goals for this? Yeah. Do you, can I ask you this question? Like, do you want to add on more time and if they're like, no, I just want it like one and done. I want to come in for that shot that my company needs and leave. Okay. Yeah. That's, I, I want to know that because yeah. I don't want to waste your time. Yeah. You know, but the more time that I spend with you, the better the photos are going to be. Yeah. That's good. That's good. That's good. And I guess the, the more of these kind of things that you have answered for yourself before you show up, the better, mm -hmm. you know, you'll be able to work with these people as well. Yes. Or whoever it may be. Yes. Um, Number four, are you wanting a simple headshot or something yeah. more elaborate? Yeah, so that kind of goes in what... and all that good stuff. <laughs> well, that's, that kind of goes in what I just said. Like, are you just wanting that simple headshot? Uh -huh. um, which, in my opinion, I want to know, like, yeah, are you looking for just a solid background? Which we can still make that more modern and work with that, you know, more than just a here's a head up on a solid background. Yeah. But are you wanting something that more shows your personality? Are you wanting something of you working on your computer or talking with clients? You know, like if somebody came in right now and took a picture of us interviewing and like they kind of got the back of my head, but you were talking to me yeah. like that would be cooler than you like staring off. You know, it just shows a little more like dimension of what you're doing. Yeah. And 
or somebody's in here taking behind the scenes photos of our interview or something like that. Like those are things that you can use later on. Um, and we can take the time to plan a shoot yeah. where we can bring in those things and put in the work to make like the most of your money and the most of your time. Yeah. No, that's good. And so, um, I think what I like about that is that whenever I thought about a headshot, I only thought about the chest and mm -hmm, up. Mm -hmm. Where I hear you talking about a, a headshot or taking these is like, all right, let me get you sitting down at a computer. Let me get you in these different yeah. spaces. And I don't think about those as headshots. But now it's like, oh, I guess those are headshots because I guess a headshot is just typically just um, – yeah, technically the definition of a headshot is what you're saying. Yeah. It's literally like okay, okay, okay. here up. Okay, okay. That's a headshot. But whenever people reach out to me for a headshot, I always offer them packages that include photos like I'm talking about. Got you. In case, because I feel like in today's world, people think sometimes that's what I want, but I don't know how to communicate it. They just like me. <laughs> yeah. Like, I need a headshot, but really what they're wanting is more than that. Yes. So that's what the elaborate, when you say yes. how elaborate do you want it, it's like, well, it's really not a headshot you want. You want something a little bit more. Right. Yeah. And sometimes people just don't know how to communicate that. And over time, I've just learned to kind of like offer that up front as a price option and a price point because sometimes that's, they're willing to spend that and it's not that much more yeah. for me personally no. to offer that. So um, because typically what a headshot requires, if I'm not coming on site to you, you're coming to my studio that I pay time for. I don't own it. Um, shout out to Wren in Edmond and Rosensalt in Edmond. Um, those are two studios that I like to use for different shoots. Um, and I'm already paying for the time yeah. to be there. And typically I work that into my cost. Um and, and I try to make the most of that and be upfront with a client. Like, here's what, here's the time that we have in the studio. If you don't want that entire time, I'm happy to split this with you. And you have another shoot after you to take up like the rest of the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm just honest with them because I want them to know like what they're paying for. Yeah. Um, here's why this is a little bit more. It's because I have to work in that studio fee. So if we're already there, let's just like take advantage of it. And make it happen. And, yeah. And then you can pay a little bit more if you want to and get more out of your time. That's good. Yeah. No, that makes sense to me. That's good. So number five, you're a photographer. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is big. I don't know. Like, I think about several years back before I was in the business, like how many photographers did I know? And I didn't know that many. And I think sometimes people just go to who their friend went to. Mm -hmm. But I personally encourage people because there's so many, so many different photographers in Oklahoma City. And of course, I would be the like lo love to be the one that's working with you. Yeah. But there are so many options in different styles. Um, and I think that it's important to know like what you're getting from your photographer. Um, first of all, like pricing. Like what does your photographer offer? And don't be afraid to ask for something that maybe they didn't suggest. Um, that maybe you've seen like a friend has done or something like that. And just doing your research, like looking at reviews on Google. Hopefully your photographer has like a Google review business, Google business page. Um, you can look at reviews. You can look on their Facebook page. Maybe they have that, their Instagram, um, their website, especially. And just kind of make sure that you know what you're getting out of your like price, your time, what they're offering you. Like, are they giving you all the digitals? Do you have to pay for the session fee? And then you have to pay for the images, yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, so just like knowing who you're working with and if your friends have worked with them, it's a easy way to already know that you can like trust them. Yeah. Um, but if you don't know anybody that's worked with them, like feel free to ask them questions and email, ask them to see a gallery um, that they've shot yeah. for a business or something like we're willing to do that because we want to earn your trust. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just good to do your research. Yeah. No, that's good. And smart. Yeah. And, and, and you talk about the Google review. Mm -hmm. Um, is that common for all – like if a, if a photographer doesn't have a Google review, should you like mm – -hmm. ah. Okay. <laughs> actually, that's why I say like look at their maybe their Facebook page too because I actually found that a lot of photographers don't have Google business pages. Uh -huh. Sometimes it's because maybe – and I don't even know if you can do this without it, but maybe they don't have an address they want to put up yeah. on Google. Um because most of them are freelance working out of their home. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. having a studio or anything like that. Yeah. But I will tell you – Having a Google business page has actually changed my career. 
Um, I get a lot of cold calls from random people that found me on Google. Um, I get a lot of, I encourage reviews because I give away like Starbucks cards for them. Um, or I'll just send out like a mass text to all my clients and be like, hey, can you put this review? Uh-huh. I'm doing this drawing or whatever. So entice your clients to give you reviews as photographers. But I've gotten a lot of jobs from people that don't live in Oklahoma that are looking for an Oklahoma photographer for like a commercial job. Mm. Like, for example, like I think it was two or three years ago, DoorDash um, reached out to me because they needed they had a dasher in Oklahoma City that they wanted to get like lifestyle images. She's oh. a, she's a cyclist. She's a backpacker. She's an artist. And they wanted to get all these pictures of her to do this like blurb of her on their uh, email website, whatever. And so they just needed an Oklahoma city photographer and they found me on Google and I got, That's cool. and I put the bid in and I got the job. And then that same uh, producer that helped out with that shoot and hiring me also produces commercials um, for Six Flags. And so since that connection happened, I've gotten to go with her um, on several different shoots for Six Flags. And all because I had a Google business page. That's Literally. Legit. Yeah. yeah. So I think every photographer should have one. Yeah. And the reviews, I mean, you would look up reviews on anybody yeah. else you're uh-huh. working for uh-huh. or you're hiring. Yeah. A roofing company, a plumber, whatever. So why not a photographer? I think you should have them. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. But they, now you shared some other tips. Did you mm-hmm. want to share those real quick? Or? Um, yeah, let me look. Now these are bonus tips, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that George got some is bonus tips. Yeah, yeah, just some go them, through them real quick. So some of them go along with what I said, but one thing is your photographer should educate you. So we talked about this earlier. Um, you may not know what you're looking for personally, but that's why that phone call or that email communication is important. Let your photographer kind of show you what they offer and maybe they offer something you wouldn't have thought of. Uh-huh. Um, but know what your goals are for your your picture. Um and then, yeah, invest. So I'm still learning this personally because a lot of my clients are, you know, they're looking for that quick headshot. They're not wanting something, like, really elaborate. They want it to show off their personality, but it's not going to be super, like, um, I don't need them for more than, like, 30 minutes yeah. or, like, an hour maybe, you know. Um, but I say go with the, like, middle of the road or – the larger like package option because you're already getting ready for the shoot and we'll kind of go into this other bonus tip but like get your hair done get your makeup done you know spend time checking out like your outfits what are you going to wear make sure that you're groomed as guys or you know whatever make sure you're feeling your best like you ironed your you ironed your shirt i don't know there's like little things that like (laughs) you might as well yeah (laughs) like yeah i don't know if you're gonna spend time like i've had guys show up And they like threw a white, you know, kind of like what Uh you're wearing. It's like a simple black collared shirt with like a white collared shirt in their truck. And they realized like once they got to the shoot that it was like three sizes too small. And then it's like 10 years old and it doesn't fit. Yeah, I don't know. Like just spend a little extra time getting ready for the shoot and invest in like your photos and you'll be happier with the results. Yeah. Um, And then another tip, uh, update your headshots every three to five years. I say five years is the max um, because... Five years, you've probably, like, changed a little bit physically. Like, maybe your weight, maybe your hair, maybe your style, like, of clothes. Um, I say five years, it's a max. But I say three three to five years. If you can do it every year, even better. But even I am, like, two to three years. So, Um, And then, let's see. Yeah, I kind of mentioned this earlier. But just maybe take the time to, like, schedule that dry bar blowout. Maybe get that makeup done, you know, with a local makeup artist. Um, put a little like thought and intention into what you're doing for yeah. the sh- for the shoot. Bring extra outfits just in case. Yeah. Um, I have my clients text me like photos of their outfits laid out. Oh wow! Sometimes if they want my opinion, yeah. I don't require it. Yeah, I'm not like send me your photos. Yeah. Where are your photos? You're not ready for tomorrow. Yeah. But like, <laughs> I don't require it. <laughs> but I I encourage them if they want my opinion. Um, and I know some photographers that'll send out like guides uh-huh. of here's what you can wear or oh. here's what here's what here are some tips to wear. The what's best? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. In their opinion. Yes. Yeah. So those That's are just good. bonus tips. Yeah. That. Uh, Oh, okay. That was five investing in you. Mm-hmm. That's good. 
Well, jo- thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate thank you. it. Yeah, Tell people where you. they can find you. Okay, so you can find me currently. So my name is Jordan Clark. I just recently got married. Um, but right now I'm in the process of rebranding. So currently my business is Jordan Mobley Photography. So you can find me on Instagram. Um, I think it's Jordan Mobley Photography or Jordan Mobley underscore. That's my Instagram. Um, and then you can find me on Facebook, Jordan Mobley Photography, jordanmobley.com. Um, soon enough, that'll all be jordanclarkphoto.com. So maybe maybe by the time this comes out, we'll yeah, see. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's where you can find me. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for yeah. spending time with me. Thank and you, Traveling Hattie. to get through America. Yes, yes, I appreciate you. Yes, thank you so much. Yes, you are so welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you for hitting that play button for another episode of the Hetty Coleman Podcast. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, as always, go win. Yeah.